For far too long, the smart home cartel has ruled over us. They take our information, advertise to us, upsell our children. It ends today. The makers of the most powerful local home automation system released a tiny but mighty device that may very well dethrone these giants. Is this the beginning of the end for the smart home cartel? I created five challenges for these two contenders, but here's the twist. I'm not going to judge. I'm going to be biased. My wife will test, judge, and declare the winner between these two. So these are the five scenarios that she wants to test. Playing music, setting timers and alarms, weather information, answering like general knowledge questions, and controlling smart devices. But I have a surprise bonus round that might change everything. First, I need to set up the Home Assistant Voice PE and get it ready for the fight. So here's a 10 second epic B-roll. Home Assistant Voice PE. Your whole job is to test it. You can use it the same way that you would use the Google device, and we're going to actually start with the Google device. Hey Google, there's 12 days of Christmas by Pentatonix. Sure, Link. 12 days of Christmas by Pentatonix. Playing on Spotify. Playing the first day of Christmas by okay. Love So it's playing. Hey Google. Stop. Okay, so play successfully. Fantastic. All right, next one. Hey Google, set a five second timer. Got it. Five seconds, and that's starting now. Hey Google, stop. Hey Google, how cold is it outside? It's forty-two degrees. So too cold to have two open windows. It's the perfect time to have two open windows. Uh, hey Google. How do you say 10 in Korean? In Korean, that's... Yeah. Anything else you want me to translate? No, thanks. Yeah, hey, Google. Turn off the lights. Hey, Google. Thanks for that translation, but I'm all done with the translations. Uh, hey, Google. You may need to be Turn off the kitchen lights. Three lights off. All right, so Google was able to do all five things. Oh man, all right, so we're gonna test the Home Assistant Voice PE. The way you turn it on is you can just say, okay, now, and it will turn on. Nabu? Yes, Nabu. I am so nervous, oh my God. All right, go. Okay, Nabu, play the 12 Days of Christmas by Pentatonix. Okay, Google, should I be lessons? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it's doing. I don't know where it's gonna play. It's struggling. Okay, so it looks like that failed. Next one! Hey, now. Okay, now. Set a timer for five seconds. Okay, now. Okay, Nabu. How cold is it outside? What's the time temperature? She asked me what's the temperature. <laughs> uh, ask her again. Okay, Nabu. What's the temperature? 69 degrees. That's wrong. I'm pretty sure that's the temperature in the house. Yeah, it's the temperature in the house. Ask her what's the temperature outside, okay, I guess. Nabu. This is frustrating. Okay, Nabu. Okay, Nabu. What's the temperature outside? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, next one. Okay, Nabu. Okay, Nabu. How do you say 10 in Korean? In Korean, 10 is 7. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> okay, Nabu. Turn on the kitchen lights. They came on. Okay. They're on. Okay, so. It was not able to play music. It was able to set alarm. Was not able to tell you the weather. It was able to do general knowledge, and it was able to control the smart home. I have a curveball now. The idea is to run the same entire test, but Wi-Fi off. 
do we really have to test Google for offline? Uh, yes, we need to. We need to show how well it works under these conditions. <laughs> we don't know that. We're testing it. We do know that. Let's just test it and see. Hey Google. I can't reach the internet right now. It's Check your modem or router connection and try again. The same thing. Let's before. just ask for all five questions. So is that your she first can't one? Can't answer my questions at all. Hey Google. <laughs> I can't reach the internet right now. That was now. for Check number two. Can't right even set alarms or time. I'm not doing it five times. Ask okay. it for... Ask okay, it to control. Okay, Nagu. Okay, Nagu. Play 12 Days of Christmas by Pentatonix. It doesn't play music. Nope. Doesn't look like that worked. Okay, Nagu. Okay, Nagu. What's the temperature outside? Hey, it's not my device. We're testing it. At least it turns on. That's more than what Google did. <laughs> okay, now How do you say 10 in Korean? So it is failed four out of five tests. Can we just go ahead and assume that it's going to fail the fifth? Uh, no. Just, no. Just ask about the turn off the it's lights or something. It's not going to do it. Just try it. Okay, now Turn off the kitchen lights. Uh, now, this is kind of uh, odd because it's supposed to work for some of them and it's not, which means that I've probably set it up incorrectly. Mm. Give me. So I'm going to have to do this again? Uh, n n yes. <laughs> which one do you think uh, won this challenge? If there were any winners at all? Google. Google, okay. Why do you feel Google won? It works. It works. And it's easier to talk to. Easier to talk to? What makes it easier? You're just used to talking to it. It also doesn't freak out when I ask it to stop doing a thing in the middle of a thing as well if you do. Mm, fair enough. That's good. That's good. That's good. Anything else? This is good feedback for the people. The pe who? Which people? The people who created the device that sent it to me. The home assist people are watching your videos? They do. How fancy for you. Yeah, we'll see if they still want me to be on these videos and send me things. <laughs> To be fair, to be fair, what it's using both OpenAI as well as Nabu, like their system. So it's leveraging both. So it's able to tell you things within the house, but it's also supposed to be able to tell you things outside of the house. Looking at the logs, it looks like it just didn't hear you properly. I'm seeing like the text not coming in as you've described it. And then I'm also noticing that um, certain devices weren't showing up when they're supposed to. Right now, I don't have the device that I played music on. I took it offline, but that is a good test technically because no matter what's online or offline, it needs to know and play it accordingly, and it couldn't do it. So that was also a good test. Let's go over the highlights from this matchup. To be transparent, I really wanted Home Assistant to take the win, but I have to agree with my wife on this. The user experience wasn't quite there. Part of what makes a product, software, or system rank well on like the user experience scale is that the experience is repeatable under various circumstances. Now this means that variance in speech, internet connections, peripherals, and other external factors must be accounted for. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that everything needs to be accounted for, but the things that directly relate to the experience needs to be dialed in, which kind of segues into another advantage that Google had in this whole thing, and I call it home court advantage. It's already integrated into my home's ecosystem, and even though I use Home Assistant, I've had Google Nest devices in my home long before I started with Home Assistant. So from an integration and setup perspective, things just work for Google devices. For the Voice PE, I was able to get it paired quickly into Home Assistant, but to give it the abilities to stand toe to toe with Google, that took some time and even worse, it takes trial by error. This points to the big picture problem, the true power of the smart home cartel. They've been dominant in the space so long that habits and expectations have already been formed and new devices like the Home Assistant Voice PE needs to not only meet those benchmarks, but they also need to exceed it by providing something novel and useful. Google, Apple, and Amazon have been working on their user experience, making it as easy and as simple as possible. They know that's where the big bucks lie. They do this by removing anything that's perceived as complicated or, or difficult to use until they're left with a simplistic experience that doesn't offer a lot of choices or autonomy, but 
users find it easy. All of our autonomy and, and power is traded for convenience, which is very smart on their part if you think of it, because the lower the barrier of entry, the more people will adopt. And the longer that it's adopted, the more integrated into the life of the person it will become until you start to form habits and dependencies around it. Then ads come, then data mining, and then subscriptions. I mean, it's a whole tech playbook. Home Assistant, I don't know if they're trying to bring the smoke to the smart home cartels or if they want to just throw down like an Una reverse and then take their place at the top. But what I do know is what this means for me and you. At the end of the day, all Home Assistant is is an enabler. It enables us to replicate the experience of the big three using open source tech. Now, the advantage to this is that we have the ability to technically evolve faster than the smart home cartel. Like we can get give our smart homes amazing superpowers that currently the smart home cartels can't do. But that comes with a downside and it always does. And the downside is actually pretty, pretty intense. It's the reason why we are the underdogs. In my experience as a software engineer, I've seen that, how to put it? I've seen that powerful features mean absolutely nothing to people if they one, can't find it, and two, they can't easily use it. Every single time I've worked with platforms that give you the ability to do anything, the user experience just plummets. Like it just goes way down. And then what ends up happening is that we over engineer, we try to build amazing functionality, but it always comes at the cost and expense of maintainability and usability. Every single time, every single time. Home Assistant gives us the power to do amazing things, but we as Home Assistant users, we have the hard job of taking that power and crafting a dialed in user experience. And for this reason, I agree with my wife and her judgment on this battle, but I don't think this is an L for Home Assistant. This L is an L for me. That hurt. Bro, that was hard to admit, man. I'm gonna have to see a therapist. I need to make the experience consistent. I need to account for the edge cases. The L is mine. Now, there are a few updates that I know Home Assistant has coming down the pipeline that I see will help me out in the future in crafting this dope experience. But until then, look forward to the rematch. If you're interested in like the user experience around smart home tech, I have a space in my community where I talk about the smart home user heuristics. It even has some suggestions as to what you can do to take regular home assistant automations and actually make it into something that's pretty pleasant. Links in the description.